and we particularly like to mention and welcome um, Filecoin as a sponsor and member of our BBA ecosystem. Um, we will be uh, we're excited to also um, announce a number of other partners coming online over the next few weeks. So it's great to see uh, new members and participants joining the association and our respective network to further education and progress within um, our industry space. Um, I'd like to also mention that we will be attending the International Scientific Conference in mid-April and we welcome, uh, I think there are a number of, kind of small number of spaces still available for that, so if you refer to your um, newsletters you'll be able to get more information on that if you'd like to kind of subscribe and hopefully we'll be seeing a number of you there. So I will hand it over to Dr. Nakfi and we look forward to um, sharing our insights and oversight and knowledge today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> Deborah, for um, the introduction. And um, I would like to welcome all uh, our guests today and uh, welcome to Filecoin Foundation for uh, uh, is the BB ecosystem and for joining us um, in this journey. Um, what uh, I would like to do is um, give you an uh, an update on the uh, recent uh, Bank of England's request for information regarding the CBDC and, and privacy. And um, this is a response that we submitted last month. Uh, before I uh, go on, can everybody hear me clearly? Just say yes in the chat box or raise hand or something so that I know that you can hear me. Okay, thank you. So if you, yeah, just to take a seat. So in order to sit, you can just double click on anywhere on the bench, uh, on these, uh, these benches there. Um, you don't have to stand, just, just click anywhere on, on the bench and double click and you should be able to see it. So, um, yeah, so the uh, last month we uh, submitted uh, our response to the Bank of England's uh, request for information regarding CBDCs and, and privacy. And this was submitted on the 10th of March. And I think the deadline was, was the 12th of March. So the, um, we will share the, uh, our response later today. Uh, but I would like to give you a, a brief uh, a summary of um, what we submitted. So CBDCs, as we know, the central bank digital currencies, there are, there's a lot of discussion. We, we consulted our members from across uh, quadruple helix, from academia, from industry, from, uh, from enterprises, uh, general public. And we know that there, there have been several questions. Uh, there are lots of questions, more questions than answers at present. And there, there have been concerns around privacy and the CBDC. But at the same time, there is a, uh, a promise uh, that CBDCs uh, uh, hold for, for the future of finance. So several concerns um, uh, have been raised in the past. And um, when we submitted our response, we, we highlighted from, uh, from increased surveillance and monitoring to uh, data security risks, uh, loss of anonymity, censorship, obviously implications for individual privacy, um, uh, and, and so on. And so, um, so in terms of the key points, I think the, uh, the number one was, was surveillance and monitoring that was uh, uh, identified. And one of the, perhaps one of the most significant privacy concerns at the moment, uh, and, and how do we deal with, with it, and how do we address this? Uh, there is this concern that there is going to be um, increased surveillance and monitoring of individuals and their financial activities. And unlike uh, physical cash, which offers some degree of anonymity, CBDC transactions, obviously they can be tracked, they can be monitored um, by central banks and governments. And this level of uh, surveillance, it raises uh, fears among public on, on, on encroachment on individual privacy rights, uh, potential abuse of power and so on. So talking to general public, talking to uh, uh, our members, this was highlighted as one of the concern. 
and it was felt that the, the public may be a bit hesitant in, in engaging in certain transactions or uh, or express their financial prefer preferences uh, freely if they know that their all the transaction data and everything is being monitored and scrutinized the second one was data security that was highlighted by uh, one of our members and because there is there is going to be centralization of financial data in the in the cbdc systems so the concerns were uh, uh, around data security because a vast amount of financial uh, transaction data is going to be um, stored in some kind of a central database uh, it could be a, a central ledger yeah, it could be a blockchain based ledger but whatever it is and that could become a target for for hackers for cyber criminals and a single breach of that uh, that data uh, point can 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 cause identity thefts and and financial frauds and other other forms of exploitations. So this this unauthorized access to sensitive information it can uh, obviously further undermine trust in the financial system, and that was uh, raised as a, another uh, concerns. And because if we are using some kind of a distributed ledger or blockchain or or an immutable ledger, then obviously the financial data which is there is going to be immutable as well and 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 that uh, that can be exploited by the hackers and so on uh, and this sensitive information could be leaked so that was another concern <clears throat> the the other issue was uh, obviously around loss of anonymity which is uh, uh, which is important in 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 terms of financial privacy obviously cbdc is not going to be anonymous um uh, and obviously, there will be a digital trail for all the all the transaction financial activity. And some uh, there were some suggestions that this pseudonymity could be preserved in in CBDCs through some uh, cryptographic uh, techniques such as zero knowledge proofs, etc. Um, and 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 if we are talking about uh, CBDC replacing uh, physical cash entirely, then um, how are we going to um, to maintain this uh, uh, this level of uh, privacy and, and autonomy for the individuals? So some uh, some banks, central banks, have put uh, privacy by design uh, architectures in place. If especially if they are planning to use open source distributed ledgers, because we can use um, things like zero knowledge proofs and other cryptographic systems which ensures that only the uh, required level of data so the need to know basis kind of system um, will be um, accessed by the uh, by the authorities and other other parties and they can also prove that the transactions is obviously legitimate who is sending it who is receiving it while uh, hiding the other uh, uh, information and data uh, such as the account balance etc uh, and also some other personal identifiable data. So this is a, a way of um, addressing this concern. Another issue that was raised was obviously tracking the spending habits. So because the CBDCs would um, track every transaction real time, there is a concern that uh, people's spending habits, etc., could be monitored and tracked, uh, and they could be used for advertising and other purposes. And this people uh, CBDC proponents argue that this could lead to more personalized services and tailored financial products etc which uh, may be a valid point but at the same time the critics are also uh, uh, concerned that this could be used uh, for exploitation uh, and 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 the the data could be commodified so there are this this further raises concerns about the the ethics of it uh, the consent issues around commercialization of privacy, ownership, and uh, so on. The other important um, uh, point, the area for 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 concern was uh, the third party access and 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 the government overreach and global surveillance because CBDC system, uh, depending on how you design them third party providers can have access to the transaction data uh, this could further complicate uh, privacy issues and compromise privacy um, and, and while it was uh, discussed that the intermediaries such as payment uh, processors or fintech companies 
um, they have a, uh, a role to play in facilitating some of the transactions in this uh, in this ecosystem, depending upon how we how we build uh, these systems. Um, but at the same time, it raises uh, some questions about the privacy and security. So, without uh, 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 robust safeguards and and clear regulatory frameworks, this um, third party access to CBD transaction data. Uh, may result in uh, breach of trust, violations of privacy rights, etc. So I think the uh, the small print is important here. Uh, also, there was it was mentioned that the in the context of cross border transactions, CBDCs can uh, facilitate um, uh, this process, but at the same time, uh, could also um, be uh, used as a tool for global surveillance uh, in terms of information sharing um, between go between governments and the concerns were around um, again uh, individual rights across international borders and this is a this is an important uh, area and the <clears throat> the last one was uh, an important topic which has been um, has been discussed before, which is a digital uh, exclusion and discrimination. While we say that there is financial inclusion with CBDCs, there is also another aspect, which is exclusion with, with, with that, because um, individuals who are not um, digitally savvy or they don't have access to the digital infrastructure. This, and we know that um, I was looking at some data from Age UK. There are 27% uh, of people in the UK over the age of 65 do not use a smartphone. 27% of people over the age of 65. So that is uh, roughly around 3.4 million people living in the UK. So um, if it's a mobile app, if it's a digital wallet, um, can they use the wallet? Uh, are they digitally savvy? So I think this is an important. So I think this is in summary there are some other points as well we will share this the response uh, later on, on 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 our social media but these are the concerns some of the main ones and uh, and and how do we address them i think this has been uh, there's been a, a debates around it uh, building legal frameworks um, if it's a decentralized system uh, how are we going to uh, maintain uh, privacy confidentiality are we going to use zero knowledge proofs uh, privacy by design, uh, users should have more control over their data, how is it going to be used, what is going to be the consent and confidentiality and ethical issues. Uh, regular audits was mentioned uh, to check for the privacy issues and take any immediate action if, if, if any potential area of concern is better identified. So I think the uh, it is crucial really to balance the privacy with the need for security and fraud prevention. Yeah, it's important. I think balance needs to be struck uh, when uh, we want to maintain privacy without obviously enabling any kind of illegal activity in terms of in the in the financial systems. So I think that's it from me. Thank you very much uh, for listening.